morning everybody. It is Sunday the 22nd of October and this morning finds me down in Abingdon Marketplace in the centre of town and behind me is the County Hall. I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. I'm down here today because today is the annual running of the Abingdon Marathon which is the main marathon running event for the County of Oxfordshire. This is the 37th year, sorry, 36th year of its running, but it's actually only the 30, 35th race because um, the race had to be abandoned one year because of flooding in 2007. Um, the race starts over in northwest Abingdon, comes ar runs around a circuit of North Abingdon, then goes through the villages in South Abingdon on a double lap and then finishes again in North West Abingdon. So in about 20 minutes or so, we expect the lead runners to be coming through the Market Square. You can see it's been um, cordoned off for them to run through. And after that, they'll run down Ox Street and out down through the south of the county. Uh, there are four major championships being decided today. There is the Oxfordshire County Championship, the Middlesex County Championship, the Berkshire County, County Championship, and the Armies Championship. So there is a real um, intensity to this marathon for the local participants. It's limited to 1,200 people just so that it can be more easily marshalled. Um, and there is a maximum time limit of five hours after which time the race is over, regardless of how far you've travelled. Um, I'm here partly to support a colleague of mine and his friend. So that's Andy Greening and Dan Church. Andy uh, is a triathlete normally and has never run a marathon before, but he's running with his friend Dan this year. Um, having helped him with bicycle support, on Dan's week-long marathon running, effectively. He's run the whole length of the Thames from central London up to its source in the Foot Coxswold Hills in Gloucestershire, which is 225 miles. Already they've run and cycled this week, and they're finishing that off with the Abingdon Marathon today. And they're running in aid of a local charity called Leah's Wish. Uh, Leah is a young girl who died a few years ago from cystic fibrosis and her mother set up a charitable foundation in her name which raises money to raise awareness of the condition but also to help fund the charities that assisted Leah and her family while she was suffering and dying from the disease. Um, I'll put a link to the Just Giving page down below if any of you are interested in, in helping this worthwhile charity. And I think it's just a very nice touch that these two boys could have run for any charity but have decided to run in aid of a local minor charity. Um, so I'm in the Market Square and I'll put a picture in here of the Market Square as it was in the 1960s. And you'll notice that the most significant change that's happened, apart from the buildings themselves, is that the Market Square has been raised to be on the same level as the surrounding streets. It was uh, a sunken car park before. And this is the Market Square in the centre of which the statue of Queen Victoria that is now in the Abbey Gardens used to stand facing the County Hall, which is on this side. And <coughs> the market in Abingdon has a long history. Uh, until the 14th century, the market was operated by the Abbot of Abingdon under various charters. The first charter for the town market um, was in the reign of Edward I, which is the end of the 13th century, the late 1200s. So once the abbey disappeared in the 1530s under the dissolution of the monasteries under Henry VIII, Abingdon as a town fell into quite a state of poverty, really, because Despite the antagonism between the monks and the town, the monastery provided most of the wealth of this town and most of its importance. Um, to the extent that when Mary Tudor became queen ten, 15 years after the dissolution of Avingdon Abbey, she took extreme measures to appoint a new town council with new mayor and burgesses and to provide a charter for the town in order to re-establish the economy, which it happened very successfully and Abingdon never looked back from that day. Um, 
I'll just turn the camera around. You can see the Christmas lights have now been put up. They will be switched on soon for the Christmas shopping in Berry Street. And Berry Street has been reconfigured in the last few years. Um, it had a very kind of 1960s concrete look, although it was actually just a facade. Um, but there has been a lot of work done to improve the facilities. <sighs> There are, there are still issues surrounding Berry Street in that the local authority, the town council, which is effectively a parish council under local government legislation, has very particular ideas about what kind of shops it wants to have in the town. And so we still have several empty units, even though it's quite a, a, a well-to-do and bustling market town. Um, you'll notice that there are considerably older buildings around this square. Um, most, of the, most of the buildings on the left-hand side here are modern, um, built since the 1960s. And the ones on the right-hand side, from the photograph that I put in of the market square, the building itself is still pretty much the same as it ever was, but the facade of the hotel has obviously been removed. Um, but you can see that the, some of these buildings are considerably older than others and don't necessarily stand um, up, straight up and down, plumb uh, as it were. Um, and on this side we've got the county hall which is now the museum and it's a rather attractive building and on the upper floor so there's a lift at the back which you can just see through the arches and on uh, sorry, well, there are stairs there. There's a lift around the back, which is uh, on the outside of the building. Um, and on the upper floor, they have an MG motor car uh, as a, an emblem of what Abingdon used to be as a, an industrial location. There was an intention originally to glaze these archways, which I'm very glad to say failed at the planning stage, because it would have fundamentally changed the feel and the use of this space, it would have, it would have in, increased the, the floor space available for the museum, but at the cost of an area that the public feel quite comfortable walking through. And it would have also changed the wind patterns in this area because we, we have quite a breeze th being channeled through the, the high street. And without the um, ability of the uh, arches to allow the air to escape, it would have significantly altered the airflow and could have affected birds and other wildlife that live in this area. everybody I'm home now um, having watched the uh, marathon run through town um, I have to correct a mistake that I made in terms of the path that the um, the marathon was taking it wasn't going up I thought it was going up the high street but in fact it went down East St Helen Street and then across um, the back way to the Drayton Road so um, which makes more sense, in fact, because then you don't have to close as many of the public roads for as long. So it's a, a simpler 
uh, method for them. So I'm hoping that they all did well. Unfortunately, my video cut out just before Andy arrived on the scene. So um, I did manage to say hi to him and cheer him on. And I think he was very grateful for that. And I also saw Bob and Wendy down there, which was very nice to see them out and about. So that was today's marathon. So I thought I'd use the opportunity of this episode to correct another mistake that happened on Friday's episode at Well in Smithy. Well, it wasn't so much a mistake as one of the bits that didn't record and I didn't realise hadn't recorded until I watched the episode back yesterday um, as to why Wayland Smithy is actually called Wayland Smithy. Now, Wayland Smithy is a um, anglicisation of a uh, Saxon um, idea and there are a number of such Wayland Smithies around the country. And for those of you who know The Simpsons well, uh, although it sounds like Wayland Smithers, which is uh, Mr. Burns's sycophantic sidekick, and although Matt Groening spent a period of time living in Oxfordshire before he started um, The Simpsons, um, I don't think that there uh, he may have seen or heard the name or even visited the site. Uh, and it may have provided the inspiration for the name of Wayland Smithers, but I don't think there's any intention of um, linking it to the location. But um, Wayland is, a, as I say, an anglicisation of a Germanic and Norse god, various called Voiland or Volunda or similar um, derivations of the same name. And he was the smithy for the gods in, I guess, Valhalla or the equivalent thereof. Um, so he made the battle armour and the swords and shied the horses and all the rest of that kind of thing that a blacksmith would normally do. And so when the Anglo-Saxons saw the long barrow, it does have the look of a blacksmith's forge about it, uh, the, the kind of enclosed area where you can heat up coals to a high temperature and so smelt iron and that kind of thing. Um, or at least heat iron enough sufficiently that you can mould it and hammer it. So it was a very natural extension for them to call the site that because it was clearly something of a religious and sacred nature, um, they just um, gave it the name of something that was familiar to them, which was the forge of the god Voiland, um, which became Wayland. So there you go. So that explains um, the origin of the name. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to... I'm sure there was something else I wanted to talk about as well, which I also wanted to correct or add information into, but I can't for the life of me remember what it was now. So it can't have been anything particularly significant. No, it's completely gone. So I think... Given that I've done several longish episodes over the last few days, I, I will uh, call this a day at about 10 minutes or so. Um, was it about the marketplace? Do you know, I've got some niggling idea that I wanted to mention something about the marketplace. And I can't for the life of me remember what it was. No, nope, it's completely gone. So there we are. So I'll call this episode a day and I will speak to you all again tomorrow. So until then... Have a good day and bye-bye.